So good afternoon, everybody. Um, right in the wake of this idea or the concept of a skill bias technological change, I would like to uh, give you some empirical evidence on the uh, producti pro productivity enhancing effect of ICT and education, but especially on those interacting effects between innovation um, or ICT and uh, of information technology, it's uh, called, call it ICT, but it's uh, just one more asset included. So the, the interaction effect between information technology and skills to uh, what, what they do to the productivity growth of two specific countries. And uh, these two specific countries are Germany and the US. Um, well, this is just a slide where I describe what labor productivity is a measure for. I, I guess we can skip this because uh, you have already heard uh, all the benefits and uh, all those, uh, the, the good things that productivity does. Well, the only thing that I would like to mention is that it's a measure of efficiency uh, in the production process so that how we can produce or how we transform inputs into output and another idea or another measure uh, of producti uh, productivity is another measure of uh, how the living standards of the nations uh, are. So now we can jump right to the first uh, slide. Uh, here it shows the five-year uh, averages of productivity growth for the United States from the period 92 until 2005. And what we can see is that there were two peculiar increases in the productivity growth rate of the US, one post-95 uh, and the other post-2000. These are normal breakpoints that have been used largely in uh, the uh, economic literature. When we now look at the development, productivity development of Germany, we see a completely different picture. We see a peculiar decline in the productivity growth and using the same uh, periods of uh, the same averages, uh, we have one drop post-95 and then we have another very strong drop post-2000. So now is uh, the question, uh, well, just there have, have, have been a lot of uh, research on this issue. So uh, what are the sources of ICT, uh, of the, the, the US productivity surges? And uh, for the post-95 <laughs> surge, there have been a lot of research by, for example, uh, Jorgensen and uh, Steyr, but also Oliner and Sickel, who found out that it was mainly the information or IT information technology or IT producing industries that created heavily productivity growth contributions to aggregate, um, aggregate US productivity growth. But then the post-2000 surge was completely different from uh, the first one due to the fact that now a much broader group of industries um, co um, contributed positively to productivity growth. And it was especially the so-called IT using industries, though those are those industries that uh, use IT uh, quite heavily. There were also market services that did that better than before. Styro, for example, uh, working at the New York Fed, published a paper uh, in 2006 where he analyzed this uh, positive effect um, from market services productivity growth on aggregate uh, productivity growth. And for Germany, we have these dual productivity declines. And uh, in our own research, we found that there were these ICT, um, ICT effects in so-called ICT producing industries in the period post-95, but those effects were much smaller compared to those effects that we have seen in uh, the US. And uh, another very strong problem, big problem in Germany is that those non-ICT in terms of industries, uh, that they collapsed during the entire period. And the two reasons why they collapsed in productivity growth were uh, they had a very strong decrease in their non-ICT capital deepening during this uh, period, post-95 and post-2000. And as we already heard, this is this total factor productivity. There, those industries also uh, collapsed strongly uh, post-2000. And all those collapses were so strong that they could not be compensated by the ICT investments uh, produced or uh, invested uh, in the ICT producing industries. 
So here's a picture that shows on the uh, horizontal axis the labor productivity contributions from the so-called ICT intensive industries to uh, the uh, total economy um, a, um, labor productivity growth. This is what we see on the, on the vertical axis. And here is a group of countries that uh, experienced very high productivity growth in those ICT intensive industries. And those countries show uh, hence a very strong productivity growth on the aggregate level. Then there's another group of countries. So in the first group, we have seen this US, for example, Sweden, and Finland. But then we have another group of countries. This is, for example, Germany, France, and Austria, uh, whose ICT intensive industries produced very uh, lower um, productivity growth. And hence, the entire economy had a lower productivity growth. And then we have another group. This, is those, uh, this group is sometimes called the productivity disasters. Uh, <laughs> Uh, which uh, comprise Italy and Spain. So those industries, uh, those countries had very low AL, uh, labor productivity growth in ICT intensive industries and hence very low aggregate productivity growth. So now we have to ask the question, why was the, why was the ICT investment or ICT intensity in the uh, in United States higher than that what we've seen in Germany? And uh, this is something uh, that leads right to this idea that there must be some kind of new skills that are, are needed to transform this kind of investments into productivity. So or you need some kind of skills that are able to reap the benefits from those investments. And uh, the idea is based on the, um, or the concept is based on the idea of the so-called capital skill complementarity. This was introduced by Grilichus in the, the late uh, uh, was in 1969, where he showed, or he analyzed, that uh, uh, a skilled labor force is much more complementary to physical capital than an unskilled labor force. And uh, going from this point, or starting from this point, uh, one could take the entire capital stock and break it into ICT and non-ICT capital uh, stocks. And the new technologies are now embedded in the ICT capital stock. And uh, for example, the OECD and their information technology outlook did this. And they tried to figure out, OK, what, what kind of skills do we need uh, to work with this new ICT capital stocks? Also, Breshnan and Brinjels and the HIT did a, a firm level analysis where they found that such firms that, are, uh, that have a lot of IT innovations are characterized uh, by a um, or that they are in a, working in an environment which is characterized by a very high-skilled uh, labor force. And this leads right to the idea of the so-called skill bias, technological change, what we already heard from Daniel, um, uh, which works uh, that way that the technology is, um, increases the relative productivity of those people who are high-skilled compared to the productivity of those people who are unskilled. And this is normally reflected in the term skill uh, premium. And skill premium is something that is measured only as, um, how can we say that? This is just uh, the wage for the high skilled compared to the, way, to the wages of the low skilled. And Asimoglu, for example, did a lot of studies on this. And he showed uh, how this kind of skill bias technological change and the skill premium that de um, developed over the 1970s and 1980s in the US. And the idea of this, this paper or this presentation is that something like a skill bias technological change idea must have been happened also during uh, the phase, the launching phase of the new economy post-95.